Hi there, my name is Charlotte Reeves. I'm from Unleashed Education and you tuned in to another editing toolbox video where we share a quick tip, trick or technique to help make your pet photography editing life easier. In this video, we're going to be looking at selection tools in Photoshop. So the ability to select and work with different areas of the image in Photoshop is probably one of its most powerful features. So first up, let's have a look at the different tools that we have available to us. So the selection tools are accessible in the main toolbar here in Photoshop, and it's basically just these first three sections here. So if you click and hold on one of these tools in the toolbar here, it will actually open out and show you the rest of the tools in that particular little group. So let's go through them one by one. So first up, we have the marquee tools. So we've got the regular, the elliptical, and then the single row marquee. Rectangular basically is just as you would expect. So you just click on the image and pull out some type of rectangle, let go, and there you go, you have your selection. Next, we have the elliptical marquee tool. Now, if I go and make another selection while I still have something selected, the new one is going to overwrite whatever old one that I had. So I'm just gonna draw on this section of the image over on the right here, and you'll see that the original section disappears. So if I pull out an elliptical uh, selection, you'll see that it makes some type of circle or oblong, and then I just have to let go, and there's the circular selection. Now, the single row marquee tools you can either do a column or a row i don't really use these much it just doesn't seem like a practical thing for pet photography so anything that's not related to pet photography here we're going to sort of skip over pretty quickly so in the next section we have the lasso tools now these are the ones that i definitely use the most first up is just the regular lasso tool where you can just draw a shape to make a selection so basically if i wanted to select around the dog i would just draw a shape around the dog. So if you start drawing and then you don't actually close the loop, it will just do a straight line uh, to wherever you started from. So you can kind of get the idea how that works there. The next one is a polygonal lasso tool. Again, this is one I use a lot and it allows you to create straight edged selections. So to use this one, say I wanted to draw around the dog again, you would click to start and then basically every time you wanted to make a point, you would just click again. Now this is really handy for selecting bits of foliage, bits of grass, anything that has a straight line. Next in the lasso, we have magnetic lasso tool. Now this isn't one that I use very much, if at all actually. Basically you just draw along the edge of a shape and it will magnetically stick to the edge of the shape. Now it doesn't do a fantastic job in a lot of cases. It's not really great with fur. Uh, there are definitely easier and quicker and more accurate ways to do the same thing, but there you go, that's that tool there. Next, we're moving on to the quick selection tools. So you've got object selection tool. Now this is a fairly new feature with Photoshop. Basically, if you hover over anything in the image while you've got this tool selected that Photoshop identifies as an object, it will show you, it will light up blue. And then all you have to do is click once and it will select that object that it has found. Now, if you're gonna be selecting the subject, again, there's better ways to do that, but it can be really handy for selecting a particular object that you might want gone, say, in the background. Next, we have the quick selection tool. So again, this is not a super accurate way of selecting things. Basically, you're using a sort of brush to paint in the area that you want selected. So again, if I was going to select a subject, I would just kind of paint in the area of the subject and it sort of detects the edges of a particular area. If we were gonna zoom in even further and say, just select the white parts, you could just sort of paint inside the white parts and it will just select those. It's really good at detecting edges of things to make a really quick, rough kind of selection. Now, the final one that we have here in this section is the magic wand tool. So this is a good tool for selecting areas of similar tone. 
So you've got a bunch of different settings up the top here. So by default, I'm pretty sure the tolerance is set to 32. Now tolerance is basically how much on either side of what you click on will also be selected in terms of tone. So if I was going to select the, uh, the grass in the background of this image and I just clicked once, on that grass, see how it's actually only selecting areas of similar tone. If I wanted to select all of that area, I would need to increase the tolerance. Let's take that up to 50 and see how it's selecting more now. Now, if I wanted it to select all the areas of the image of that particular tone, you need to untick contiguous. So if I deselect that and now click here again, see how it's going to select all the parts of the image that have that really similar tone. This can be handy in certain situations, but again, I believe there are better ways to do this one. So now that we've gone through the actual tools, let's have a look at how we can work with selections and use the different selection tools in different ways combined with each other. This is the real power of using the selection tools. So let's just say I make a selection and it's a rectangular selection and I want to add to that selection or subtract from that. So I might decide I want to take a chunk out of the corner. So to subtract from that selection, I would press option. See how the cursor actually changes and it has a little minus sign there. So I would then draw another selection and it would subtract and take away from that original selection. Now you can also add to the selection as well. So to do that, instead of pressing option, you would press shift on the keyboard and see how it comes up with a little plus. So you can then add to that selection if you need to. Now it doesn't need to be connected to the original selection. I can add to the selection over here and anywhere in the image where I want to add something to that selection. Now you can switch between any of the selection tools while you have a selection made. So say I originally used the rectangular selection tool there. I might decide I want to use the lasso tool and add to this or subtract from it. So all I need to do, switch to the lasso tool and then I can add or hold down option and subtract from that. Or I can subtract that whole section there or I can add here. So you get the idea. Any of these tools here you can switch between at any time that you have a selection. Now I will just quickly mention a very special selection tool that is available in Photoshop and it's called the patch tool. Now if you're working in pet photography you will probably use the patch tool quite often. It's really good for getting rid of things in the image, particularly things like leashes. So if we select the patch tool it's not in the selection tool area, but if we select the patch tool and we say, I'm going to select this area over here, see how it works exactly like a selection tool. Now that gives you a bit of a hint as to how you can use it. So often if I select something with a patch tool and then I click and drag inside the patch tool to use it as the patch tool, and it doesn't do a very good job, or I don't like what it does, I will actually just use that patch tool as a regular, treat it as a regular selection tool. And I can then press delete on the keyboard and do a content aware fill into that area instead. Now, the awesome thing about that is you can say you want to select this area here and you want to use the polygonal lasso tool you can make a nice straight edged selection around here and then you can switch to the patch tool and then use that selection that you made with a different tool and patch that selection with the patch tool. So as you can see, the patch tool is a very special type of selection tool. It has a special feature, but you can also just use it as a selection tool, as a regular lasso selection tool. Now we better just quickly go through the select menu. Yes, there is an actual menu. I'm just going to go back in the history here because I think the left hand side of that image looks terrible now. There we go. Okay. So we've got an actual select menu in Photoshop too. So there's a few different things you can do here. And there's also some keyboard shortcuts that you can use that are going to be really handy and make things quicker for you. So first of all, you've got these four different functions up the top here, select all, and you can see the keyboard shortcut right next to that. And that is 
command or control if you're using a Windows computer, A, and that will select everything. You'll see the little running ants all the way around the edge of the image there. Now let's say I wanted to undo that selection, so remove that selection. We can go select, deselect, or we can just press command D, and that will deselect whatever you have selected. I use that a lot. Then you've got reselect. So if you make a selection and then you accidentally lose it, using reselect is going to bring that back again. So let's just go reselect. And there we go. We've got that whole canvas selected again because that's the last selection that we made. You can also invert a selection. So for example, I'm just going to deselect here. If I use the lasso tool, I've got a keyboard shortcut set up for that. If I use a lasso tool to select the dog and then I want to actually not select the dog and have the background and everywhere else in the image selected instead, you can quite easily go select inverse or you can press shift command I and that will invert the selection. So now everything but the dog is selected. So that's a really handy one as well. Now this next section in the select menu, I don't really use, I'm gonna skip over that. Then we come to, I guess what I call the special selections. There's a few other different ways that you can make selections in Photoshop. So color range is a really good one for selecting a particular color. So say I wanted to select the dog's tan bits. So those tan bits of coloring fur on the dog. I can just click once on the image, shows you a little eyedropper. I can click once on the image and it will show you in this little overlay here exactly what is being selected. Now you can increase the very technical term fuzziness to actually select more similar tones to that original color that you clicked on. You can also tick or untick localized color clusters as well. And that slightly changes the selection there. So it gives you a bit of a preview of what's going to be selected when you click OK. And then obviously it shows you the selection that it's made after you click OK and it's selected that color range. Now that can be really handy if you've got a particular color, say a really bright, bright green in the background that you absolutely hate that you wanna maybe pull some saturation out of. So that will allow you to select just that area of color. So I'll deselect that. And next we have focus area. So what this does is select everything in the image that's actually in focus. It gives you an immediate preview. Now it said that the only thing in focus is the actual dog here, which is fine. So the reason that you might wanna do this, say if we click okay, you might then want to invert that selection. So shift command I and do something to the parts of the image that are not in focus. So that might be a reason that you would wanna use that one. So deselect again. Then we have subject and sky. Now I'll give you a little hint with the subject. Subject selection is getting better in Photoshop. I still don't believe that it's quite as good as subject selection in Lightroom, but hopefully they're bringing the technology to a similar kind of level uh, eventually. Uh, something that you can do to improve the subject selection in Photoshop is a setting that you can change. So if you go to Photoshop, Preferences, and then Image Processing, you will see that the select subject processing is set to device. Now, if you select that to cloud, it will tell you that it will actually give you a better result. Now it takes longer because it's got to send information about your image to the cloud for processing, but it is a lot more accurate. So let's keep that on cloud and go okay. Now, when we go select subject, it's going to think about it for a little bit longer than usual. It'll tell you what it's doing here. So it's sending your image data to the cloud. And then the selection that it gives you will generally be a lot more accurate than if you leave it on device processing. Now you can then refine that selection even further by going into the select and mask workspace. I'm not gonna cover that in this particular tutorial because it needs a little bit more time than what we have here. But that is also an option here in the select menu. You can go into select and mask and also any of the selection tools will have a little button at the top here called select and mask. That then brings up this workspace. We'll have a quick little sneaky preview of what that workspace looks like. 
and then I'm just going to get out of that. So that might be a topic for a future editing toolbox video. So you can also, I'll just deselect that. So you can also select the sky. So let's see if it does a good job of this. There we go. That's not too bad too. So you might then go and make a, uh, say a hue saturation adjustment layer and it will apply that selection to the layer mask. And then any changes that you make in the properties uh, for that adjustment mask there are going to apply to just that section that you selected. So I've just done a really hideous thing to the sky. <laughs> I'm sure you can see that. All right, I'm just gonna delete that. So there's a few other little tweaks and bits and pieces that you can do. Um, let's just do a select subject again. Now you can modify your selection. So you can add a border, you can smooth the edges of the selection, you can expand the selection, contract it, or you can add a feather to the selection. So those are all different ways that you can modify your existing selection once you have it. Grow and similar, I found kind of unreliable. I don't use those at all. Transform selection uh, can be a good one. So it will actually give you transforming handles on the selection. Now it's not doing anything to the image, it's just transforming the selection. So it's different than if you were to go into edit transform or image transform. So you can then make that selection say bigger. So there's a few different reasons that you might want to be doing that. But it, again, it's not something that I use very often. Now, the final thing that gives you in here is uh, editing quick mask mode. So this will give you a nice little overlay preview. This might be something that's a bit more familiar to you if you're used to working with selections and masks in Lightroom. So that can be a handy mode to view things in. You can then switch into the brush and you can use the brush to edit that selection. Kind of similar to what you would do in Lightroom and if you're working in masks. So to get out of that, you would just need to go untick edit in quick mask mode and it goes back to a regular selection view. So that pretty much covers it for selections. I hope that's given you an idea of all the different ways that you can make and modify selections in Photoshop. Now there's one final thing that I would like to add. I am very often working with very particular selection tools and I like to be able to activate those tools really, really quickly because I switch between them quite a lot. So those tools are generally the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool and also the patch tool. Now, if you wanna be able to select those quickly and easily, you might wanna edit your keyboard shortcuts. So if you go to edit and then keyboard shortcuts, you can actually choose the tools here and you can set up keyboard shortcuts for each tool. So as you'll see, I have L uh, linked to the lasso tool. I have P linked to the polygonal lasso tool. So to change those, you would just click in there and just type a new shortcut. And I also have a little bit further down here. I also have K linked to the patch tool. So that basically means I can be doing anything in Photoshop. I just have to press L and I've got my lasso tool. Uh, P and I've got my polygonal lasso tool. Or K and it switches to my patch tool. So setting up keyboard shortcuts for things that you use often is a really good way of speeding up your workflow when you're working in Photoshop. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully you picked up a few tips for working with selections and selection tools in Photoshop. Let us know in the comments if there's anything that you'd like to see on our next editing toolbox video. And for now, I will say goodbye.